joined by Democrat Ron Wyden of Oregon. Uh, they have a plan out trying to simplify the tax code and deal uh, with the Bush tax cuts that are set to expire. Uh, let me begin with Senator Wyden, please. Uh, Senator, I, I, listen, there have been a lot of attempts to try to simplify the tax code. None have uh, worked. Uh, we could get into why you think it's going to work this year in a moment. But just reading through what you guys have written, I'm trying to understand what percentage of the tax benefits now received by people earning over $250,000 would they still receive uh, based on this plan? We believe they and everybody else are going to have an opportunity to get ahead. The current tax system is just cluttered with exemptions and deductions and, and credits. And what we do with a simpler and more efficient system is provide substantial tax relief to middle class uh, folks. And more importantly than anything uh, else is create jobs. We're going to, and those folks you just talk, talked about are some of the key uh, uh, risk takers. We're going to lower the corp corporate uh, rate. We're going to have incentives for small business. So you provide tax relief for middle class uh, people and create jobs, everybody wins. Senator Gregg, you, you're obviously been among those who've been uh, decrying the collapse of bipartisanship in the Senate recently, and, and I think both of you get uh, bonus points for trying here. But I'm curious as to whether there's anything you see, whether out of Senate leadership, either Democrat or Republican, or the White House, that suggests this is something that uh, that you in your final months in the Senate and moving forward will be able to work together on and, and actually do some, some real changes to the tax code. Well, you've got to start somewhere, and as a very practical matter, what Senator Wyden and I have done is put forward a comprehensive rewrite of the tax laws to simplify them, to make them fairer, and to encourage people to go out and invest, take risks, and create jobs. We take the corporate tax rate from 35% down to 24%, have a single flat rate tax. We take individual rates, we compress them into three basic rates, 15, 25, and 35. We give small businesses huge expensing opportunities, uh, and we also allow small businesses to buy new equipment uh, and expense that and their operating costs. So, as a very practical matter, this is a this is a job. As Ron said, this is a job creating tax law. What we have now is a tax law which creates business for tax avoidance counselors and and tax attorneys. And so we're trying to shift that focus. It follows on. It's really sort. Of, it's. It, it, its forefather is the Reagan-Bradley tax cuts of 1986. That's our goal here, to get back to a simpler, fairer, more pro-growth, uh, more job creation, more risk-taking type of tax Sen law. Senator Gregg, I'll stick with you. Why, why do you think that the chances politically are better to get this done this year in an election year uh, than, they, than what we've seen in previous attempts to try to simplify the code? Well, I hate to use this word, but I'd call it common sense. You know, if you're here in Washington, I think you've got to be sensitive to the fact that this economy is struggling and that our purpose should be to try to create jobs. How do you do that? Well, you give people incentive to go out and invest and create jobs. The way you do that is you should tax laws aggressively. This will make America much more competitive than some of our, our competing nations in the industrialized world in Western Europe and Asia relative to tax rates. will cause companies to want to expand here, will cause people who want to take risks to take the risks here, and will even cause some foreign companies to take a hard look at whether they should, should come to the United States to create jobs rather than do it in, their, in the country of their origin. So uh, if you're interested in getting this economy going, if you're interested in creating jobs, this is the type of proposal you want to look at. Senator Wyden, of course, key to this would be bipartisan buy-in to get Democrats and Republicans together. But I'm curious your take uh, as to some of the rumblings we're hearing on the health care bill. A lot of talk now about using reconciliation to pass health care reform. Is that something you support? Well, for, first of all, staying on taxes just, just for a minute, one of the reasons that we believe there's an opportunity for bipartisanship is there's some real history with some of the folks in the uh, Obama administration on this kind of approach, modeled after uh, 1986 where you clean out uh, a lot of these uh, tax breaks and use it to hold right. down rates and keep progressivity. When I introduced an earlier version of this bill, Rahm Emanuel was a, a sponsor. He was the lead sponsor in the House of Rep Representatives. So this is an area where I think we can have real bipartisanship. I'm very much aware that there's discussion about various procedural routes for uh, addressing the health care issue. Senator Gregg and I have some bipartisan ideas we'd like to contribute on the health care issue well, as well. I'm curious as to, as to that point. Is, is reconciliation something you support and are you concerned about the impact it would have on the bipartisan climate uh, that, that may be rumbling out of, out of efforts like this? Everything that I have tried to do on the health care issue, the taxes and economics is to promote a bipartisan approach. Let's advance good ideas. When the American people see good ideas, whether it's Thursday at the summit or another occasion, then they're going to be able to 
will hold all of us accountable. Now, I'm not going to say what the procedure for health reform ought to be. What I'm going to say is Senator Gregg and I, in both the tax area and the health area, have good ideas, give both sides a chance to score policy uh, uh, points rather than political points. That's what the country wants to see right now. Senator Gregg, uh, part of what you're doing on this tax plan is to address the uh, sunsetting of the Bush tax cuts. As you know, those tax cuts were uh, voted through on reconciliation. Uh, do you think that it's okay for the majority uh, now in the Senate uh, to use that on this health care proposal? No, obviously not. This is an entirely different policy issue than the tax cuts. Tax cuts were adjustments in rates which already existed. What you're talking about with the health care bill is a rewriting of, uh, our, of, our, of the way our health care system is delivered in this country. It's the most massive piece of legislation I've ever seen and it clearly shouldn't go through the Senate under reconciliation which allows only 20 hours of debate and essentially uh, no debatable amendments and then comes to an up or down vote with 51 people being able to pass it. That's that's railroading the Senate. It's taking the Senate off its fundamental purpose, which is to take complex public policy issues like reforming health care laws, bring it to the floor, have it debated, and have a lot of good amendments offered. You know, Senator Wyden and Senator Bennett have offered a really excellent alternative here to the, to the Senate package, the House package, and the President's package. I would like to see that brought to the floor and debated as one of the amendments, and it well, couldn't be under reconciliation. Well, we'll leave it at that. Well, one absolutely opposed to reconciliation, one not saying so. Senator Ron Wyden, Senator Judd Gregg, thank you both for being here today. We appreciate you, your time. Thank you. thank you, gentlemen, and good luck. And we're joined now by Anna Berger, Secretary Treasurer of the SEIU. And I want to start with health care. And we heard